Hey guys, it's me, Yang Guizhou here, from my hotel room in Taiwan. I'm still in quarantine and I have about 10 days to go. I'm getting a little bit bored, so I decided to go onto Twitter and see what the CCP shills are posting. So let's jump right in there with our first entry from the legend himself, Mr. Jerry Good. On the left, you see the American Observatory Telescope built by the Americans. <laughs> and on the right, you see the Chinese Observatory Telescope built by the Chinese. Spot the difference? <laughs> yes, you are right. The label Made in China has a new meaning now. Quality. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're comparing something that first opened in 1963 to something that hasn't even opened yet. This FAST observatory in China is actually not open to international scientists, and the way international relations are going with China and the rest of the world at the moment, it probably won't ever be open for international scientists. In contrast, the Arecibo radio telescope has been serving the international community since the 1960s. When the Arecibo telescope was operational, it was able to transmit signals and receive their reflections from planets. This allows Arecibo to monitor near-Earth asteroids, which is important in defending the Earth from threats of possible asteroid strikes. This is something that the Chinese ripoff can't even do. So made in China? Not even as good as something made in the 1960s. <laughs> nice one, Jerry. Also, while we're on the subject of astronomy, let's compare how many observatories China has compared to the US. Hmm, I think we have a winner here. Here's the next one from our legendary shill, Jerry Good. <laughs> Trust me, this is gonna be a good one. <laughs> I took a DD, same as Uber, today, and this Chinese driver listened to Metallica, Master of Puppets. Western people don't get it, but Chinese do in fact know what's going on in Western countries. <laughs> Actually, more than what Westerners think. CCP allows USA rock bands in China. <laughs> Yes, China is free to listen to whatever they want when they're in the privacy of their own homes or driving in a taxi, as your example said. But what if you want to go and see that band live? Well, the band Jerry mentioned, Metallica, actually played in China. But when they did play, their usual two-hour set was cut down to only one hour. They were not allowed to play classics such as one or Master of the Puppets because the Chinese Communist Party said they couldn't. Imagine going to see Metallica and not being able to sing along to these great songs. Many other artists have been banned from playing in China including Jay-Z because his lyrics are too profane. Bjork chanted free to bet when she played in Shanghai and has since been banned from playing again. This band has been banned, Oasis. The singer Noel Gallagher appeared at a Free Tibet concert in 1997, and since then, Oasis can't play in China. Bob Dylan has also been banned because of his past as a counterculture artist. Lady Gaga, Bon Jovi, and finally, the ultimate ban, Justin Bieber. Because of his bad behavior in social life, damn that Justin Bieber is just too subversive for the CCP. I mean, Wow, if people be hearing baby baby baby, they just might start a revolution. Okay, let's take a break from Jerry and let's have a look at an ex-golf expert turned China expert, Cyrus Jansen. 
Many people talk about the Great Firewall of Hashtag China. <laughs> this refers to the government-controlled censorship of the Hashtag Internet in China. <laughs> Many Westerners believe Hashtag Chinese people are cut off from the outside world as a result. I've now realized there is a wall that cuts people off. However, it's a wall that Western Hashtag Mainstream Media has built around Hashtag China to cut off Westerners from knowing the truth. <laughs> the amount of hashtag fake news and inaccuracies reported about China is shocking. It's sad that most Westerners never get a chance to be exposed to the real China. <laughs> Wow, Cyrus Jansen, you are swimming in the sea of assumptions on this one. Comparing Chinese state-run media to Western media is ridiculous. What does he actually mean by Western media? Is he assuming that Western media is this sole entity that constantly blasts China? How can he pigeonhole Western media like this? Which country's media is he even talking about? I know it's Twitter and you need to keep it simple, but come on Cyrus, it's not as simple as just comparing two different types of media, but let's just assume that he is comparing Chinese state-run media to various media outlets in the UK, just to make sense of his absurd claim. Chinese media is run by the state, i.e. the Chinese Communist Party. Freedom of the press and information is limited for the purpose of maintaining control and stability. This actually makes it virtually impossible to be fully informed about world news, and the only news you will ever hear is what the CCP wants you to hear. Contrast with what Cyrus calls Western media, which consists of numerous different media companies that set their own agenda and has very little interference from the state. Western media can actually be manipulated by governments and big corporations, just to make that clear. But there is a lot of choice, and sometimes there's too much choice. But you can be fully informed about what is going on in the world. However, you need to put on your critical thinking hat. Unfortunately, not all of us can do critical thinking, right Cyrus? So yes, most Chinese people are cut off from the rest of the world. But being from the West, I can read all media, including the Chinese news, because you know what? China also creates media for us brainwashed Westerners to consume. I do sometimes read this CCP propaganda and contrast it with the millions and millions of other news articles here in the West. Yes, some people don't do that. And that is why a lot of people are ill-informed. But the option for them to read and analyze and make an informed opinion is there. Can you say the same for China? Oh, and one more thing, you say most Westerners don't get a chance to be exposed to the real China. I agree with you, because right now, they're not letting us in, are they? Haven't they closed their borders? And when Western journalists or their Chinese counterparts do want to cover China in the news, the CCP makes it very difficult for them to do so. I wonder why you think you know the real China, Cyrus. Can you actually read Chinese? Do you often read Chinese news in its original language? I'm not sure if I've ever seen a video of you speaking Chinese, but please prove me wrong. Okay, that's enough of Cyrus. Now let's have a good old laugh at Lee Barrett. Typical Western media. Can't just say China places its flag. They need to say communist flag. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Once again, talking about Western media and just pigeonholing it into one category. It's like if I told somebody about a film I watched recently and they asked me, what kind of film did you watch? Which genre is it? And I would just say to them, oh, you know, it was a film. A very filmy kind of film. Like, a film film. <laughs> well, anyway. What do you think? I like turtles. Not all Western media is saying the communist flag. 
These various examples don't mention communism at all. Now, look at this example from Chinese state media Xinhua News. It actually says if you translate this Chinese, this is a touch of Chinese red from the surface of the moon. And this next one says, showing a bright Chinese red. Now, although it doesn't explicitly say Chinese communist flag on the moon, I think we can all grasp the subtle meaning of this language here and interpret the red as communism. So anyway, that's just a small amount of the nonsense these guys post on Twitter. Go and read at your own risk and have a good day.